You know, when, 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 when things get heavy and we get lethargic, we get complacent, you just start going through the motions. Amen. That's, that's what I'm talking about, brother. Now, wake up. Shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been good to us. He blessed us. Amen. To be here once again today. Amen. Amen. Everybody that laid down last night, some of them didn't get up this morning. Hallelujah. But God has blessed us. He has allowed us to see another day. Amen. amen. And for that alone, amen, I am thankful and grateful. Thank you, sister. I am thankful and grateful. Amen. I'm not on my sick bed. I'm not in the hospital, and I'm not in the morgue. Amen. amen. So I just thank God that I'm still here. Amen. That only tells me that he got a plan for my life because I'm still here. The only reason why you're here today, the only reason why you're here right now is because God is not finished with you yet. Amen. Amen. You might think that you are here to do your church routine, your religious duties. You might be here because uh, someone asked you to be here. Or you might be here because maybe you figured that the pastor expected you to be here. But the real reason why any of us is here is because God blessed us Amen. to be here. Amen. Amen. He blessed us to be here. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Uh, the Lord took my family and I uh, across the airways and the highways safely and soundly. And he brought us back home safe and sound. Amen. Amen. When we got home, we found our family and our friends safe and sound. So that's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. I remember at one time I was in, uh, I think I was in the Bahamas, somewhere I was out of the country, and my brother-in-law passed away. And when they called me, it, it sort of disturbed my vacation, but I come to understand that no matter what happens, when God calls you, ain't nothing nobody can do about it. So one of me and me, you know, let my vacation go to waste. You know, uh, you, you know, you sorrow, you know, as we do, you and me, you know, we sorrow. But I had to continue moving on. And that's one thing that I'm learning more and more, and it's becoming more and more evident to me as I begin to look at life uh, from a different perspective than what I looked at it in the past. There ain't none of us here to stay. Not a one of us. Not a one of us. Amen. The Bible said it was according unto all men once to die. And after that, the judgment. If you heard me say it before, you heard me say it many times. You might miss your doctor's appointment. You might miss your dental appointment. You might miss a lot of appointments. But you ain't going to miss this one. You know, the Bible says that we can die before our time. But one thing we can't do, you can't extend your time. And there's all sorts of scriptures that's written where people have died before they time. But the Bible tells us to redeem the time. So if we're going to redeem the time, well, we have to understand that inside time, God creates what is called opportunity. So when he's saying redeem the time, what he's saying is make the best out of the opportunity that I have provided with time. Now, most of us would probably say, if I could go back in time. I mean, I mean this. What you're saying, if I go back in time, I would take better advantage of some of those opportunities that I squandered in the past. Amen. But I'm coming to understand that one of these old days, for the last time on this side of eternity, I'm going to lay down. And when I do, that's when eternal time begins. Because eternity has no end. And at that point, I'm looking to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been a good steward over a few things. Enter into my rest, and I will make you ruler over many things. That's why I do what I do in the time that I have. That's why I serve God the way I serve him with the opportunities that he provides for me. Every day, God gives us brand new opportunities to glorify him. And it's all captivated inside of time. Time. 
when I was a young man, I started to prepare for my retirement. Didn't work out like I planned it. The money I put aside, sent my kids to college, build up for my retirement. In time, things happened. We had the differences of some of that money. So when retirement came around, I didn't have what I planned on having. But somehow, someway, God still worked it out. Amen. He still worked it out. Because he has invested some things in me that no matter what happens to me, it won't affect the plan that he has in my life. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says that he has an expected end for us. An expected end. In other words, what God has did in this thing called time, he has built a plan for your life and for my life. And nothing no one can do can deport that plan. Nothing, nobody, not even you, can stop the plan. Because it's not your plan. It's not my plan. It's his plan. And he chose to use us in order to accomplish his plan. Now, when I was young, I made investments in my future. Okay? To make an investment simply means that you make a purchase in order to retain or to, re to, to, to obtain a gain. How many of y'all got investments? Okay. Now, when you invest, you're saying that I'm going to put something in this expecting to receive more out of it. All right? I need to pay close attention, pay close attention, because we, we're going to be talking about something that is not really talked about a lot in our community or even in our culture. We're going to be talking about what is called an ROI. ROI. An ROI is what is called a return on investment. Return on investment. It is an accounting term if you will, return on investment. If I invest in something, I expect to get something out of it. If you invest in stock, you need to be careful about the stock you invest in. You need to look at the plan. You need to look at the trend that the stock is making. If the stock is losing money, you don't want to invest in that. But if the stock is making money, then you may want to invest in it. And if I could turn back the hands of time, I would go back into time and I would invest in Facebook. <laughs> if I could turn back the hands of time, I would take all my money and put it into Microsoft. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> because throughout time, now that time has elapsed, meaning events that elapsed, now that time has elapsed, and I hear and I can see in retrospect what Microsoft was saying they was going to do back in the early 90s, what they have now done in the late 20s. We'd all be millionaires. <laughs> Come on now. But instead, we made poor investments. We had invested in things like pork belly. Okay? Well, now they say pork is bad for you. Okay? We invested in things like Colombian coffee. Well, now they're saying Colombian coffee is down because coffee is bad for you. Okay. What we thought was the trend back then, we invested in, but it come out to be nothing. So if we're going to have an ROI, if we're going to have a return on our investments, we have to make sure that we're investing wisely. There's, it, it, it's a story. It said that there was a man and he was traveling through the desert, and the man was, he was extremely thirsty. In fact, he was dying of thirst. And he happened to come across this old wooden shack in the middle of the desert. And he thought maybe someone was living there. And when he went into the shack, no one was there, but it was an old pump there, an old water pump. And on the pump, there was a jar of water. 
And the man was faithful to deliver because where the jar of water was, it was also a sign. And the sign said, use the water in the jar in order to prime the pump. Now, just in case some of y'all don't know what it means to prime the pump, in order to get water out of the pump, you got to pour some water in. All right? Now, the man is faithful to deliver. If I take this jar of water and pour it in this pump to prime it, and suppose the pump don't prime, then I ain't got no water. But I could take the jar of water and drink it, and that might carry me a, a couple of days. But he didn't read the fine print. The fine print says, take the jar of water, prime the pump, and you will have all the water you need. Refill the jar for the next traveler. I'm like the man. <laughs> if I take my chances, see, because this is what investing is. Investing means that you take a chance. But you got to make a wise decision before you make a, take the chance. If I take my chance and I prime this pump and the pump don't prime, then I'm going to die of thirst. Not only will I die of thirst, I won't be able to fill the jar so the next driver, he will die of thirst too. But if I just drink this jar of water, I might be all right. It's a poor investment to drink the jar of water. And you see, that's what we do all the time. God gives us things. He gives us money, okay? He gives us money, and rather than us investing our money, we eat it. Most of the people in our culture, the things that we purchase, they have no value to them. Your bling bling, unless it's real bling bling, doesn't have any value. The furniture you buy from Finger Hut, Rental Center, it looks good, but it has no real value. <laughs> Soon you sit on it, you break it down. Okay? Everything that we purchase in our culture has no real lasting value. Well, it's the same thing that we do in our spiritual lives. Because a wise investment in your spiritual life is to invest in the kingdom of God. Why? Because this is what the kingdom of God says in the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 38. He says, if you give, it will be given back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. That's a wise investment. So I would rather invest my money in the kingdom of God than invest it in the Michigan State Lottery. Because the Michigan State Lottery is not going to always pay off to me. It may pay off to somebody, but it's not going to pay off to me. But God, he says, if you invest in this kingdom, there is a guarantee. You have a guaranteed return on your investment. Come on now. So if I'm going to take a chance on investing anything, it's going to be into the kingdom of God. Amen? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. In your own Bible, I'm not going to put it up on the screen. I told you I'm going to. Periodically, I may put it on screen, but I, I want to get you into reading your own word, your own Bible out of your own hand. Amen. You, oftentimes, you see a scripture on the screen, and it could be scripture, or it might be just something I printed up there. But the only way you know for sure is if you look at it with your own eyes in your own Bible. And there's Bibles provided for you in front of the book, from the seat in front of us. Amen. This scripture is a very common scripture, but I don't think we look at it through the proper eyes. I, I don't think we see it through the eyes of Jesus. I don't think we see it the way it's intended for us to see, because there's always something deeper in the Word of God than what you see on the surface. Amen? amen. There's always something deeper. When you get it, say amen. 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 It's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. If you don't mind, stand at your feet for the reading of God's Word. Amen. I'm going to read it into your hearing. I'll be reading to you out of the NIV. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The leading up to this scripture is about Jesus Christ being our high priest. One thing that you have to understand about our priest, 
a priest has a dual job. Mm -hmm. The priest's job is to represent God to the people and to represent the people to God. That's the priest's job. Jesus is our great high priest. Mm -hmm. All right? And the Bible says that Jesus, the man Jesus, who's still bearing the wounds in his hands, the nail, the nail prints in his feet, and the stripes on his back is now seated at the right hand of God, and he's presenting us to the Father. Amen? It says in verse 16, out of the NIV, it says, let us, talk about all of us, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his already blessed word. You can help your seat. I just want to expound on that scripture for a little bit. King James says, let us now therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain the mercy and the grace, the help in the time of need. So one of the things that you need to understand is that mercy and grace are accessible. Mercy and grace are accessible. What is grace? Grace is more than just God's unmerited favor. Grace is even more than, than, than God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is God withholding those things that we rightfully deserve. We rightfully deserve to go to hell. We rightfully deserve to be dead. We rightfully deserve to be away from his presence. But God said, I'm going to give you grace instead. Well, what is mercy? Mercy is when he don't give you what you deserve. See, every day we sin against God. Our thoughts are sinful. <laughs> the words that we speak, even in secret, are sinful words. And everything that we do that opposes God's word is sinful. Even when you don't see me doing it, or you don't know what I'm thinking, he sees me and he knows. And therefore, I offend him constantly, but he gave me mercy. Because what is the wages of sin? Death. The Bible says that sin can only be satisfied through death. But he don't let me die. In fact, he says, I'm going to grant you mercy and give you not only life, but I'm going to give you life abundantly. And then I'm on top of that, I'm going to give you eternal life. Why? Why would God give me grace and give me mercy? Why would he withhold the things that I rightfully deserve and give me something that I don't deserve? Because God has made an investment. Mm. He didn't just save you just to save you. You think you saved just to go to heaven? Mm. Come on now, wait a minute. Let me, let, me, let, me help you. let me just help you with your thinking. thinking. If, he, if God saved you just for you to go to heaven, he would have took you the day and saved you. Mm. May 20th, 1992, the day that I got saved, God could have just took me on to heaven that day. But he didn't. Why didn't he? Because he has a plan for my life. And my plan is connected to your plan. And all of our plans is connected to God's plan. What's God's plan? God's plan is that all men would be saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what did he did? He took his word, he invested it into his people, and now he says, I'm looking for a return. I'm looking for a return. Right now, one of the greatest investments that you can make in this society is land, property. Okay? So if you're going to buy anything, buy some property. Very rarely does property lose value. And even if it does lose value, it won't lose very long because it's going to come right back up. But do you think we buy property? No. We buy Cadillacs. <laughs> we buy stuff that depreciates the moment you drive off the road. Amen. And we spend our entire life Try to pay for that stuff. Mm. You spend forty, fifty thousand dollars for a car, and the moment you drive off the lot, it done dropped and appreciated ten thousand dollars. So now you got a forty, fifty thousand dollar car that's only worth forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Amen. 
And you go to trade it in, they only want to give you 20. <laughs> And I don't care where you go, I only let the best room do is 20. And you still owe 30 on it. Mm-hmm. Amen. That wasn't a wise investment. Amen. Amen. That was not a wise investment. In the book of Genesis, there's a young man named Joseph. Joseph had a dream. Joseph told his brothers his dream. Joseph told his brother, he said, one of these old days, I'm going to rule over y'all. His brothers was angry at him. They were mad at him because he had sinned. What you mean tell me you're gonna be ruled over us? Oh, you ain't gonna be no ruler of us. Joseph would have told his mom and dad, he said, you know what? One day I'm gonna rule over y'all. His daddy got mad, rebuked him, but the Bible says that his father held him in his heart. Because his father understood that if God told him something, ain't nothing nobody can do to stop him. Come on now. If God if God had a plan for Joseph's life, wasn't nothing nobody could do to stop him. Amen. So Joseph went throughout his life going through things where people were trying to stop the plan. His brothers got mad. They sold him into slavery. When he got sold into slavery, he ended up in, in the sheriff's house, in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife said he tried to rape her and he ended up in prison. While he was in prison, he met two men down there. One was a baker to the king. The other was a, a butler to the king. He told the baker his dream. He said, baker, your head will be cut off in three days. He told the brother, he said, you're going to be put back in your place, back in the king's palace in three days. He said, and when you go back to the king's palace in three days, I want you to remember to tell the king about me. The baker's head got cut off. The brother went back to the king's palace, but the brother forgot all about Joseph. Until one day, the king had a dream. The king had a dream, and the brother remembered, he said, I know a young boy who's in prison who told me my dream. And I bet he can tell you your dream too, King. This was 17 years later. So he spent 17 years in prison where somebody forgot about him. But God still had a plan for his life. The king said, well, go get this young boy out of prison and bring him up here. They went down to the prison. They brought Joseph up. They said, clean yourself up, shave, come on, you come before the king. He came before the king. As he stood before the king, the king said, I want you to interpret my dream. He interpreted the dream. He said, you got seven years of good time coming. And after that seven years of good time, you're going to have seven years of bad time. But this is the plan that God has for all Egypt. He said, during the seven years of good time, you need to take a fifth part of all the grain in the country of Egypt and put it in storehouses. Because remember, there are seven years of bad time coming. Now, the king said, all right, Joseph, since you want to take a fifth part of all the grain that's in Egypt and put it in a storehouse, don't let nobody get to it, we will do that. When they did that, after the seven years of good time, came seven years of famine. There wasn't no food. There wasn't no water. All the money you had didn't mean nothing because there wasn't nothing for you to purchase. There wasn't no rain. When there wasn't no rain, there was no vegetation. There was no plants. The animals died, okay? But Joseph, during the good time, had made an investment for the whole world. He took a fifth part during the good time and put it away. So when the Bible says that when this famine came, people from all over the world heard that there was food in Egypt. What was the food in Egypt? Because Joseph, during the good time, had took a fifth part and stored it away. What's the lesson I need you to get out of this? Let's look at it from the natural. Y'all got a stimulus check at the beginning of the year. How many of y'all got any of it left? Some of y'all got bonuses on your job. How many of y'all got any of it left? How many of y'all put anything away for the seven years of bad time coming? Huh? Now that's just in the natural. Now let's look at it in the spiritual. During the time that God has given you right now, how many of y'all have set up some timbers of prayer? How many of y'all spent more time with God today than you did yesterday? Because when you begin to spend your time with the Lord, you are investing in your future. If you don't put nothing in, you can't get nothing out. Amen. You ever went to the bank and tried to get some money out of the bank and ain't put no money in there? 
You know why they ain't going to give you none? Because you ain't got none in there. In other words, you have not built up a, a relationship with the bank to where you can even go and borrow money. See, because if I'm going to make a wise investment and I'm looking for a return, then I'm going to have to build a relationship with him. We don't build a relationship with God. We go through the motions. We go through, we go through actions. We're not really, listen, when you go to worship the Lord, I don't care if ain't nobody in here but me. I'm worshiping him. You know why? Because I realize that my worship is my commodity that I am investing into the kingdom of God. Amen. My praise is a commodity that I am investing in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? Because whenever you talk about a return on your investment, you're talking about profit. Whenever I talk about profit, I'm talking about what do I gain from this? I need to gain some things. If I'm going to spend all my time in church, if I'm going to spend all my time preaching to you, if I'm going to spend all my time worshiping, if I'm going to spend all my time serving God's people, I'll be doggone about to go die and go to hell. I'm not dying going to hell if I gave up all the pleasures of the world. My investment is in the kingdom of God. Quit spending all your time running around here trying to please people. Amen. God gave all of us three things. He gave every last one of us three things. He didn't give it all of us to all at the same portion, but he gave us all three things. He gave us time, talents, and treasures. Everybody in here got time. Now, we all may not have the same amount of time Amen. because some people going to die before others and some will die after, you know. So we all ain't got the same amount of time, but we all got time. All right? God invested time so that we would do, make the best out of the time that he gave us. Amen. When we don't make the best out of the time that he gave us, he said, those who have will be taken away and those who have not, more will be given unto me. He's talking about talent, y'all. Everybody in here has some sort of talent, some sort of skill that can be used for the kingdom of God. Most of us don't even use it. Amen. And know we got it. Amen. We know we got skill. Mm -hmm. Now, my skill may not be the same as yours. My skill may not be as good as yours, but I got skill. Amen. But what do I do with my skill? Do I use it for the kingdom of God? Or do I just let it sit there and just, just, just rot? Because keep it fine, keep it fine, keep it fine. You're going to have to give a count. He gave all his treasures. Everybody in here got some means of income. It might be meager, it might be great. But everybody in here got some access to some sort of treasure, some sort of money, some sort of finance, some sort of value. What are we doing? Do we invest it in the kingdom of God? Or do we go down there to Metson and make him rich all the way through? <laughs> the Bible says that there's a parable. And the parable was about a man. And, and it says like this. It says, the kingdom of heaven. So we're talking about comparing heaven to this parable. A parable is simply an a, a earthly example given a spiritual principle. Okay, it, it's an earthly example that, that gives us a spiritual principle. That's what a parable is. It says that the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who went on a long journey. And when this man went on this long journey, he called three of his slaves. And he said to one slave, he said, I'm going to give you five talents. Talents is money. He said, I'm going to give you five talents. And I'm going to give you two talents. And to the third, he said, I'm going to give you one. And the Bible says he gave it to them according to their ability. So in other words, God gives us things that he knows we can handle. Come on now, don't miss this. God gives us things that he knows. Come on now, I'm going to buy the other thing. God would have gave it to me if he didn't think I could handle it. He would have called me to pass in this church if he didn't think I could handle it. He already know what I can handle. He's not going to give me more than I can handle. He gave to each one of his slaves what they were capable of handling. Amen. He didn't give the one that he gave one five. Because he knew the only thing you could handle is one. So he gave to each one according to their ability. 
But the Bible says, immediately the one with the five went out and he added five more. He took what God gave him, invested into the kingdom of God, and it doubled. That's a good return. That's a good ROI, a return on his investment. Then the Bible says, the second man did likewise. When it said likewise, that means that immediately. When it says immediately, what he's saying is that they didn't procrastinate. How many of y'all got procrastinators in your family? How many of y'all procrastinate? Do y'all know what a procrastinator is? That's somebody who's just sitting around. I think I might, I might. I don't know, I might, I might. I don't know, maybe so. I don't know, thank you. No, that, that's a procrastinator. Okay, they didn't procrastinate. They immediately went out, invested God's money, double money. But the Bible says the third man that he gave one to, when he hid his. Mm. He hid his. And when the man who went on a long journey came back, he called all three of them to come and give a count of what he had gave them. The first man said, Master, you gave me five talents, and I have invested, and I have brought you ten. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. The other one man came, he said, Master, you gave me two talents. I've done it, I've got you four. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. The third man came, he said, Master, I know you're a hard man and that you sow what you don't reap, but I went and I hid your money. And here it is right here. He said, you wicked and slothful servant. He said, you wicked and you lazy. See, that's one thing I can't stand. I, maybe, maybe that's the God in me. But I can't stand lazy folks. Lazy people. He said, you wicked and you slothful servant. You good for nothing piece of meat. You ain't good for jet. I gave you talent according to your ability. I know you're able to do it, but you refuse to do it because you just lazy. Come on now, you just lazy. You procrastinator. There's women that's in this congregation that got a boyfriend, been engaged to him for 50 years. How you been engaged with somebody for 10, 15 years? That, that, that's beyond procrastination. <laughs> Help me, hold That's beyond procrastination. The old folks said, why buy the cow when the milk's free? Amen. Why, why buy the cow when the milk's free? Because you talk about, when you talk about marriage, you talk about investing my life. I'm talking about investing my life. I'm talking about everything that's in me, I'm going to entrust it to another man or to another woman, and I'm looking for a return. I'm looking for something of gain to come out of this that I may be better with you than I was by myself. Right. And if I'm not getting a return on my investment, then I'm not going to invest in you. But still, you find women every day still pouring their money down an empty well. Wee. Still throwing their life down an empty well. Sometimes, brother Don, it might be a, a different guy with a different face, but it's the same guy. <laughs> it, it, it's the same guy. Yeah. It's the same dude. Amen. He just got a different face. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's a poor investment. Yeah. If, if, if I'm going to invest in something, I'm looking for a return on my investment. Amen. I want to see some gain. I, I think it was Betty Wright made a song years ago. She said, I can do better all by myself. If I'm all by myself and I'm doing bad, I'm going to get with you and I'm going to do worse. Uh, That's a poor investment. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. I know better. <laughs> mm -mm. Oh, God. Grace is obtainable. Mercy is available. Now, therefore, let us come boldly into the throne of grace to obtain the mercy and the grace to help us in the time of need. God said, I can come and I can get mercy and I can, I can find grace to help me when I'm in the time of need. When we in need, it's almost the last place we go is to the throne of grace. Nah, Lord. I find people in need and they call me. Jesus. I need $40. Mm. No, you need a plan to get $40. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not part of your plan. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> The Bible says that when we are in need, we can boldly. Do you know what it means to boldly come? 
to boldly come means that I can come without reservation. I can come with confidence knowing that God has the answer to my problem. Amen. Now, therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain the mercy and find grace to help me. How many of y'all need some help? Amen. To help me in a time of need. I don't know about you, but I've been in some times of need. And when I'm in time to be, oftentimes I look out to people and they can't help me. Amen. Amen. I look out to people and people can't help me. Some people want to help me, Amen. but they don't have the means to help me. That's right. Amen. Amen. So of course I'm a brother right now. It's in the hospital. Amen. The doctors have said that's all they can do. Yeah. He looked at the doctors and the doctors can't help him. But why don't you just go to the throne of grace? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you just go to the throne of grace? Amen. Because the Bible says, now I can therefore come boldly. Amen. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think whether he will or whether he won't. All I know is when I get to the throne of grace, the mercy and the grace is there to help me. And whatever turns out is going to turn out for my good. Yeah. Yeah. However God want to do it is all right with me. See, if he wants to bless me by taking them all home, then that's a blessing. Amen. Listen, I would rather see a loved one go home you with the Lord to sit here on this earth and continue to suffer with tombs and everybody Amen. on this island. Amen. I would much rather for them to go home yeah. To me, now I ain't saying I ain't saying about you, I'm saying to me. I will miss my loved one. I, I know I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna weep Jesus well. Amen. Amen. But I would much rather see them gone and be with the Lord. Than to stay here in the suffer because of my selfishness. Amen. 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 Because if you really love somebody, come on now, if you really love somebody, you gotta love enough to let them go. Amen. 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 I already told my wife and my kids, hey, if I have to get there, let me go. Amen. Let me go. Don't don't be shoving no tools up me and, 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 and putting that on me and putting this on me. Uh -uh, don't don't. I, 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 listen, I spent the majority of my life preparing to go. Amen. 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 So when it's time for me to go, I can go boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain the mercy of grace to help me in the time of need. So I'm suggesting the same to you. If you're going to invest, invest in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Because when you find yourself in need, can't nobody help you but God. Amen. Amen. Nobody but God. <laughs> Investment means to accumulate wealth or gain. To accumulate wealth or gain. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, God says, I am the Lord thy God who giveth thee the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8, 18. God said, I am the Lord thy God who giveth thee power to get wealth. You want wealth? How many of y'all need wealth? Come on now, how many of y'all need money? Come on now. I ain't talking about want money, I'm talking about need money. Amen. If you ever plan on obtaining money from the God who gives you the power to get wealth, the only way you can do that, you got to show God how you're going to use this wealth to glorify him. Amen. Hello. I, I, I need to know that because God is not going to invest in something that's not going to give him a return. Amen. Amen. So if I need wealth, I need a plan to show God how this wealth that he's going to give me is going to benefit the kingdom of God. Right. If you got a child and you're giving this child 50 cents a week for his allowance, and every week this child loses one of the quarters or uh, lose the whole 50 cents, <laughs> and then the child comes back and he says, uh, Dad, uh, I think if, 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 if you gave me a dollar, I would do better because these two coins, they, 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 I keep losing them. But if you gave me a dollar, I'd probably do better with a single piece of paper. No. You'd be a fool. <laughs> I agree. You'd be a fool. Amen. 
That child ain't sucking me. Because the child wasn't a good steward over the 50 cents. And yet you're going to trust him with a whole dollar? I can't trust you with 50 cents. God said, I can't trust you with 10 cents. Amen. I gave you a dollar and I asked you to give me a dime, motherfucker. You want to give me a dime. Now you want me to give you a hundred dollars? Mm, you got to remember. You got to remember. Let, let me read this scripture for you so you'll, you'll, you'll understand. It, it, Deuteronomy 8 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Okay? Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto his fathers. What was the covenant that he had swear unto his fathers? The fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Those are the fathers that he's talking about. What was the covenant? His covenant was that I will make you a blessing to all nations. Yeah. Every man would be blessed because of my covenant with you, because of my agreement with you. He said, I will give you a land flowing with milk and with honey. Yeah. God said, the only way you're going to obtain these things I'm going to have to establish it, so I'm going to give you the power to get the wealth in order to go into the land and have what I promised you. Amen. We can't buy uh, a, a, a piece of candy mm -hmm. because we've taken the wealth they gave us for the kingdom of God and we squandered it on things that don't mean nothing. Amen. And he did it just to show you that you're not ready yet. Amen. See, that's why some folks ain't gonna never have a husband. Because mm. they ain't gonna never be ready. Mm. They ain't gonna never be ready. No matter how much God invests in you, that's why somebody ain't gonna never, some folks ain't gonna never have a wife. Because they ain't ready yet. Mm. My prayer to God is, Lord, whatever you got for me, prepare me to receive it. I wanna be ready to get what God has for me. Yeah. I would much rather be ready to get what God has for me than for God to give it to me. And then I don't use it wisely because I still got to give account to him. Yeah. The Bible says, what man do you know will begin to build a building and did not consider the cost of what it costs to build that building? Because he'll start to build the building won't have enough money to finish the building, and the people will look at the half-done building and say, that man was a fool. <laughs> so why would, why would God invest in something that you're not going to be able to finish? He's only investing in people who are using their investment to invest back into the kingdom of God. Because remember what it's called? It's called ROI, a return. What you give, it returns back to you. It's a return on your investment. When you go to work on a daily basis, how many of y'all got 501Ks on your job? Four, three Bs. How many of y'all got retirement plans on your job? How many of y'all got a job? <laughs> <laughs> some of the benefits that you should look for when you're looking for a job. Look for retirement benefits. Because you ain't gonna always be young. Come on now. <laughs> Listen, when, it, when, it, when I was 18 years old, I thought I had the world by, you know, the cojones. <laughs> I figured I had all the time in the world. I ain't, I ain't got to worry about that. That's for old folks. But before I knew it, I'm almost 60 years old. <laughs>
and the leaves begin to die. The leaves that are alive, if they come into contact with the dead leaves, then the live leaves begin to die. If you did, and you did, and you did, and she alive, it's only a matter of time before she begins to die too. Amen. See, we're a family. Come on now. We're a family. We are the body of Christ. So we have to encourage one another. We have to build up one another. It is my job to educate you on the things of God, but I can't make you apply them to your life. That's up to you. That's up to you. I can show you how to invest through Joseph, how Joseph invested in the future of Egypt. I can show you in the scripture what God says that he is the one that gives you the power to get wealth, but I can't make you do it. I can't walk you through it. So when you find yourself at the time of need and you don't go to the, go to the strong room of grace, but you call me up, Pastor. You know, I got this life here too. And he passed, you know, I paid my time. I thought I had to pass it. I, I need some help. I'm going to direct you to Hebrews 4, 16. If you need help, go to the throne room of grace. Not me. Not me. Amen. Hey, we have to learn to apply God's word to our lives so that we could profit. So that we could gain. And when you do it, he said, you do it confidently. You do it boldly. You do it without reservation. You do it with confidence of knowing that God is my answer. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the doctors say. The Bible says, whose report are you going to believe? I'm getting to now, why well, don't even look at the weather? Seriously. You know, I look at the weather, I'm like, man, I'm going to just go right there and look at the weather. That weather man don't know nothing. <laughs> he don't know nothing. All he can do is make an educated guess. That's it. God can take the clouds and move them away and open up the sun let the sun come shining through. And the weather man said, we got 75 good chance of rain. So, who are you going to believe? Who are you going to trust? The Bible says some trust in horses. Others trust in chariots. But I'm trusting in the Lord, my God. Because I know he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ever ask you or think. I know that he's able to do everything but fail. So if I ever need anything, you can rest assured, he's going to be my first, not my last, or my second. He's going to be my first. So I spend my life making him number one. Listen, if I thought that I could do better doing something different than what I'm doing right now, I would fall on my face. Out of all the money, out of all the time, when I look at it in retrospect, but I'm looking at it through humanistic eyes, out of all the money, the time that I have spent trying to make this ministry a success, if I took it all back, I could be living like a king. Mm. Or could I? Mm. <laughs> or could I? See what I'm saying? Because when God has a plan for your life, you need to understand that it is his plan and not yours. Amen. It's his plan. Amen. Do you make mistakes along the way? Yes. Yeah. You can't go make mistakes along the way. Do you jack up some stuff along the way? Yeah. You jack up some stuff along the way. Do you mess up people sometimes? Yeah. Okay. Is it unfortunate? Yeah. You mess up people. <laughs> Amen. But because God is in control and is his plan, he's never going to allow you to fail. Never. He will never. Why? Because he already knows the investment that he's making in you is a wise one. Amen. Come on. He already knows it's a wise investment. So I am secure and I am confident that everything that God has invested in me, that he's going to get a return on it. Amen. So I'm trying to encourage you today. If I don't encourage you to do nothing else, I want to encourage you today. 
Invest in the kingdom of God. Invest in yourself. You know, oftentimes we, we put so much confidence in people. And people let you down. People will let you down. We put confidence in our husbands and our wives. We put confidence in our children. Oh, my son, my daughter, she gonna be a, she gonna be this, she gonna be that. Oh, she's so smart, she gonna be a nurse. She, she's so smart, she gonna be a doctor. She gonna be a lawyer. He gonna be a lawyer. And then you're so disappointed when you find yourself looking at your high to off the wall. You're so disappointed when she never finished high school, but she got four or five babies and she ain't even 20 years old. People always disappoint you. See, it's not just parents that's disappointed. Sometimes kids are disappointed. Amen. My daddy said he's going to do this, he's going to do that, that. I don't even know where my daddy is. Disappointed. But when we put our trust and our confidence in the Lord, He never disappoints us. Amen. Never. Amen. Hallelujah. Never. Amen. 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 I hope you got somebody. And if you did, come on, thank you. Please give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Worthy to be praised. Come on and praise for somebody. Praise Him like you mean it. Praise Him on purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good to us. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior, I beg you, I plead with you right now to render your life to Christ. Because if you don't know him, remember what I said, one of these old days, and it may not be too long, you go down. They got as many short young graves as you have old long graves. One of these days, we all go down. And the Bible says, at that point, then is judgment. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you should die, it's too late to accept. It's too late. Hell will be your eternal home. But the thing about it is, God never made hell for us. The Bible says that he created hell for the devil. God don't send people to hell. When people reject Jesus Christ, they choose to go. I choose heaven. I choose to be with the Lord eternally because I know one day I will die. And when I die, this Bible tells me that I won't be dead long enough to realize I'm dead before I'm in the presence of Jesus Christ. He won't even let me see death. For those who are in Christ shall never die, but pass directly from death to eternal life. But those who are not, they will be in eternal torment. You are tormented. Mm -hmm. Torment is something because death is too good for you. But now, now, right now, right this minute, right this moment in time, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, now is the day to accept him. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He don't want you to go to hell. He wants you to be with him. He's dying for you. For all of you out there on our Facebook, on our Facebook page and our website, I just want you to know that if you don't know the Lord, all you have to do is say this one prayer, but you must mean it for yourself. The Lord, I am a sinner. And I want to be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. I believe that you died upon the cross to pay the price for all of my sins. And I believe that after three days of being in the grave, you got up and you declared all power in heaven and on earth to be yours. I believe it, I receive it, and I accept your sacrifice as my substitute. Now, Lord, Help me to live a life that is pleasing unto you from this day forth. I thank you for the gift of salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a round of applause. My brothers and sisters, if you say it in prayer, you need to know that you're saved and there's nothing anyone can do to make you unsaved. And I want to be the first to welcome you into the family of God. 
God bless you. Hope to see you again right here at Heaven's Gate Church next Sunday at 11 a.m. Bye-bye for now. Amen. Come on,